Hello. In this video, we are going to be talking about linear programming, and we are going to be solving a simple two-variable linear program in Excel using Solver, and we are going to be focusing on um, shadow prices. Hopefully, uh, this will help you get a better understanding of how they work. So we have this simple linear program, as I said. Um, we have... Uh, we make $20 per sweatshirt and $20 for a t-shirt. We're making sweatshirts and t-shirts and packing them in our van to spend the summer traveling around, seeing shows and selling our products. And we're pretending we're making them all before we go. And um, right now we're looking at 56 sweatshirts and 60 t-shirts, which would make us $2,620. And the sweatshirts take up more space than the t-shirts, but the t-shirts take more time than the sweatshirts. Uh, there's some kind of cool intricate tie-dye pattern. And we have 40 cubic feet of space, and we are using that up with our current solution, but we have time that we are not using. So this is not a detailed look at how to use Solver. There are other places for that, but um, we're just going to look at the shadow price part here. So we've got it set up. Our objective function is cell D4. We're changing the variables B3 and C3. We've got constraints D uh, six and seven is less than or equal to F six and seven. We're using the simplex algorithm and the checkbox mean our variables cannot be negative. So we hit solve and I'm just going to look at the sensitivity report. And, um, we see here, what do we see? Well, the optimal thing was 44 and 90 and we're making $3,130 and we have used up all of our space and we have used up all of our time. So what can we learn about the shadow prices? The shadow price says, for every additional hour we gain, profits will go up by $42.50. We're at 56 right now. And every unit of increase up to an increase of 44, we'll see an increase of $42.50. So the maximum we can raise it up to and expect to see these kind of improvements is, is $100. So uh, right now we're at profits of... Um, $3,130. And um, let's just increase the hours by 10. So uh, if we increase it by 10 hours at an increase of $42.50 per hour, we should see an increase of $425. So uh, that should bring us to a total profits of $3,555. So let's go here and let's take the 56 and increase it to 66. And let's run Solver. And we're not changing anything, so we can just let it run. And we'll look at the sensitivity report. And it said total profits are 3,555. And that's exactly what we expected. Now, if we look at this new sensitivity report, we can see that the right-hand side was 66. And we're using 66. And so the maximum that we can uh, see this benefit of 4254 is again if we take things up to 100. Um, so let's see what happens if we take it all the way to 100. So let's take this 166 and we'll set that equal to 100 and we will solve and we'll look at the sensitivity report. And well, first of all, it says profits of 5,000 and we've used all of our space and all of our time. And I realize I kind of skipped this something I meant to do here. Um, we were making before profits of $35.55. Um, so profits were $3,555. And uh, how much increase were we hoping to see? This would have been more convincing if I did this before we saw the answer, but um, we are increasing the right-hand side. Um, well, we're increasing it by 34. So 34 times 42.50. We expect an increase of 1445. And so total profits that we would expect to see would be $5,000. And then when we look at what we actually got, um, we got total profits of $5,000. Now, the sensitivity report that we get now says the allowable increase is, what is that? Well, it's 0. 0.0000 with 14 zeros involved. So it basically means zero. I'm just going to call it zero. So there's no increase available to us yet. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen beyond this. 
All Solver is telling us is that, or has been telling us, if you increase the time pins rate up to 100 hours for every increase, you'll get an extra 4250. And beyond that, I don't know. I can't tell you. But part of the reason I wanted to do such a simple problem is because we can look at it and make an educated guess about what will happen when we go beyond 100 hours. So looking at our original problem here, we are spending all of our time and we are using all of our space and we're making 200 t-shirts and the number of sweatshirts, again, that's well within the rounding error to be the number zero. So we're making no sweatshirts and 200 t-shirts. Now t-shirts are the most profitable of the two products. Um, they take less space, but they take more time. And with 100 hours, we have enough time to spend all of our time making t-shirts. So if you give us more time, we don't have any profitable thing to do with that time as far as sweatshirts and t-shirts are, are concerned. So what I expect we're going to see here is that as we add more hours, the number of sweatshirts and number of t-shirts will not change and the profits will not change. So let's just crank this up to 200 hours uh, and see what happens. All right, so we go to solver, we solve, uh, it found an answer and we'll see what we got. And it's what I expected. We're still making no sweatshirts, 200 t-shirts, profits are still $5,000. And um, we're making, uh, we're using all of the space and all the time just to make t-shirts. So that's the most profit that we could make. And going back here to our sensitivity report, um, the allowable increase, well, right now the shadow price is zero. And um, we could increase it by as much as we want. One plus, one times E plus 30, that means one times, you know, 1.0 times 10 to the 30th, which means infinity in Excel speak. You could increase it as much as you want to. And for every additional unit of time you give me, we'll make no more profits. Um, and that's also true for the decrease. If you take away time, no change on my profits, unless you take away 100 hours. If you take away 100 hours, then you're gonna cramp my style and start cutting into my profits. So um, we've seen here then that the shadow price tells us how much the objective function will change with a change in one of our constraints. And now it's very important to note that this only applies if we're changing one constraint at a time. Because if we uh, change one and change the other, we're, we're throwing Excel off its game as far as how, um, how the uh, simplex algorithm works. Um, but we could certainly increase space and then we will definitely be increasing profits. But at this point, we've just been looking at the increase of changing time and seeing how the uh, shadow price has accurately predicted what our new profits would be once we raise the constraints. I hope this has been helpful.